first of all, congrats on the movie. I have a lot to talk to you about. Before I, I get into the specifics of the film, I always like asking a few other quote unquote questions. Um, so I am curious for each of you, what TV series would you love to guest star on? And what TV series would you love to guest direct? I just did it and I, I'm, I'm so grateful, but I miraculously <laughs> received a call asking me if I'd like to come on uh, and, and have a little bit in succession. And I love the show and I love the, God, the, 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 the complexity of that family and that world and how these people just dominate and destroy and control all of our lives. And um, <laughs> it is a, is a fantastic, is just a fantastic group of, they're so talented from top to bottom. I mean, the, 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 the showrunners and the, the, all the writers and the, and the actors. And so I just got to do that. Um, and um, I think it's going to be really fun. I think it's going to be really fun. And, um, you know. You'd be surprised how many people say succession as an answer. So um, have you thought about playing the lottery today? Um, I should, you know. I do, I do, I do step in shit. I mean, good and bad, <laughs> I, you know, I really good and bad. Like, <laughs> but uh, you never know. I, I'm not great. I'm not a, uh, I'm not a great gambler. I think, you know, <laughs> but I do gamble. <laughs> it's voluntary taxation, man. Yeah, exactly. So Paul, what, Paul, what would you love to guest direct? I mean, I have a, I have a real soft spot for Peaky Blinders. I think, you know, like I remember going out and hanging with Adrian when he was doing Luca and, and uh, I think that show is just so, so terrific. Um, I thought Dark was amazing too. I mean, that, you know. That's actually on my list. Everyone's been telling me to watch that and I haven't watched oh it. Oh my, you gotta watch Dark. Everyone said it. Um, do you remember what it was for each of you that got you interested in wanting to do what you do? Was it a performance? Was it a movie? Was it, do you remember what that was? Since I was a little kid, I, I, I don't remember ever wanting to do anything else. I mean, I think as soon as my, you know, family had a camcorder, I sort of commandeered it and, you know, it, it started, you know, torturing my friends, uh, you know, on video. So I, there's nothing, just being, being sort of surrounded by story and storytelling and, and, you know, probably cable television, honestly, you know, um, since I was a little kid, nothing I ever wanted to do other than that. And I, I've always been an actor for better or for worse. And again, I'm very fortunate in this respect. My mother is a, is a photographer, wonderful photographer. I don't know if you know her work. Her name is Sylvia Plahi. And she grew up, uh, I, well, as I grew up, she was a photographer at the Village Voice in New York and had an assignment to photograph the American Academy of Dramatic Arts. And they, they had a, a youth program with, uh, you know, a drama program. And um, as she was photographing it, she had this epiphany. And nobody in my family is, is within the business or in the industry. I and mean, my mother's an artist photographer. My dad was a public school teacher. And, you know, the concept of be, becoming an actor in my neighborhood in Queens is just so beyond comprehension. And it wasn't, uh, it wasn't a career decision. It was just, she saw these kids and she's like, that is what you do all day on your own. And I, you know, I'd come home and I'd Im imitate this that I saw or act out or whatever the hell I was doing. And she uh, witnessed that. And I, I gave, I thrived. I, uh, you know, I just, I was already interested in magic and I feel like that was a stepping, it was an entryway into performance and understanding, creating a character and so to speak, because I would create a routine and, and I would create an illusion for adults. And there was this powerful moment as a small child to captivate their attention and mislead them. And there was a mischievous quality to that. And I think that is also what filmmaking is, is it's a magic trick. 
and you have techniques that are individual and yours to, to develop. And then you, you reel people in and you, you tell that story and um, they don't need to know all the complexity and suffering of making that movie. They just need to know that they respond to the characters on that screen and the story. And um, so I guess that it was, it was something that I loved and, and uh, understood in a small capacity as a child. I have a million other things I would love to talk to you about before getting into clean, but since we're limited on time, let's just jump right on in. So for people that are not familiar with the project, I hate asking the generic thing, but Paul, how have you been describing the film to people? I mean, I think of this movie as, you know, about a man who is a very bad man who is trying to be a good man. And what happens when you give a man like that a good reason to be very bad again? You know, the beast that comes out of him. You know, and it is a beast. You know, Adrian is a, is a force of nature in this movie. Um, that's how I describe Queen. Wh whose idea, I think it's a Monte Carlo. I could be wrong, but whose idea was it for, uh, for Adrian for you to have? A, is it a Monte Carlo that you're driving? No, it's a Buick Grand National, yeah, which was only made in, in black and was the fastest car that General Motors made in 1987. It's a V6 with a massive turbo and it's my own personal car. And so I, as Paul and I were, were concocting all of this, I was, I was, I, I, I knew this man. I've been wanting to tell a story of this nature for well over a decade now. And I didn't quite know how to go about that. And so it was a real, um, it was a real, it was a new chapter in my life to be able to find Paul and, and to find someone to collaborate with to help pull all of these ideas and, and, and an amalgamation of all the characters and people that, I have come across in my lifetime and growing up in New York. And, you know, I mean, it's a dream, it's a dream role for me. Um, and, uh, you know, it's a, it's a very complex protagonist in an action thriller genre. And as you've seen many film, you know that it is challenging to find something quite like this and especially for an actor and um, really, I feel really um, grateful that we were able to, to bring all of these elements together. I think people won't realize that uh, Adrian you starred in the movie, co-wrote it, you did the music. I'm just curious if you were also bringing lunch to the crew and moving lights on set and what else, because it seems like you did everything uh, or did a lot. Uh, I did bring lunch. Um, oh, quite a few times. Yeah. <laughs> I did a lot. I did a lot. Um, I'm driven by things that I'm passionate about, and I put everything I had into this movie. It shows on on screen. Um, there is definitely a few um, violent moments in this film. Can you guys sort of talk about the way you wanted to depict when your character, you know, is I don't want to say unleashed, but finally, you know, decide walks down a, a bad path. I mean, I always sort of thought of, uh, I thought of it as sort of like a siren call, you know, Clean is, 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 uh, is a guy who's sort of always staring into the abyss and he's right on the edge and he's doing his damnedest to not get pulled into it, but he's sort of destined to be drawn back in. And so I, I, I you know, I think there's a, a sort of allure, um, you know, uh, you know, almost sort of a, he's almost in, 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 in a sort of a recovery from his past. Um, and, uh, and it sort of, it keeps calling to him. He keeps doing the work and doing the work to try to beat it, to try to do the right thing, to try to be a good man. Um, until, uh, until, you know, there's a, there's a reason for him to go back. It's the floodgate. That's <laughs> he, right. He, he goes on a bender <laughs> and he's just, just been doing his best, you know, and, 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 you know, I think that's a really relatable thing for, for all of us. You know, you really hold it back and you, you, you know, 
you just pray that you can maintain. And then unfortunately it's some, some things in life are, are too difficult to, to um, <laughs> react in the, in the way that you, you have worked towards. And it's a, it's a, it's a, it is a work for him. It is a, it is a, a, a it is all that he's consumed with is to kind of make amends for, for his past and to, uh, and to be good and to, uh, you know, build up the people around him. And, uh, but, uh, you know, it's a, it's a violent world. We do live in a violent world and, and, um, you know, there are people that are, very powerful and and violent upon us, and sometimes, you know, the it is it is it is very difficult to know what to do with that. Yeah, well put. There's a, uh, a flare gun, I believe, and a screwdriver sequence that um, I remember in this film vividly. Um, those are my those are my flare guns and screwdrivers, by the way. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Right, but. That, Actually brings me to the by the way th those sequences are quite good but obviously you guys had to make this on a, on a budget you obviously had limited time talk a little bit about maybe what were some of the really big challenges you had to overcome to make this film well if i may i mean we made this also in the middle of winter in upstate new york yeah you know and i really wanted to make this movie in new york um you know i'm a new yorker it's a new york story i wanted to employ New Yorkers to do this. I wanted to bring in all these great people to conspire to make something. And that's why it's such a blessing that we're bringing this to Tribeca in 2021, which is so New York and such an iconic place for us to, to share this movie with the world. And obviously my love of De Niro as, as an actor and, and I just, you know, it's very exciting, but you know, we, we had, all movies are rife with challenge, but we had a lot of challenges and, um, you know, that too was a meditation for both Paul and I, every day we had to face the challenges. I think the beauty of independent filmmaking, and I'm sure Paul would agree is, and I've made all kinds of movies. I've worked on, you know, the biggest movie for universal at the time with King, uh, with Peter Jackson on King Kong. And I've made the smallest movies and, you know, uh, there are always obstacles, no matter what you, what resources you have at your disposal. Um, the beauty of independent filmmaking is it's you and your guys, you and your core team that have to fix the problem or you fall on your face and there's nobody there to pick you up. And creatively what that does for a filmmaker, for a producer and for an actor is it requires everybody to give 110% at all times. And you're burning the candle at both ends. And what, what comes of that, aside from depression and exhaustion and fatigue after the fact, <laughs> is magic when it, when it works. It is the burning and the panic and the ferocity within everybody conspiring to make magic in every moment that you have, because you have no, you have no window. And when there is an, a, a mistake or something doesn't work or the crane doesn't operate or whatever it is that, that, that you're up against, you then have to rein it in and figure out how are we going to make this day and how are we going to tell this story and how are we going to connect to those emotions and, and uh, persevere. And, you know, so much of the storytelling is influenced by that. And what you end up with is something beautifully austere at times and sparse. And what lives is the emotion and, and, the, and, the, and the truth because you, 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 ultimately everything else is ripped away and all you can create is the truth in that moment. And 
if you're lucky and if you and if you don't have the goods to do it or you fail, you don't you, you can't deliver that. And, and Paul is tenacious. He's a tenacious human being. And, and as am I. And, you know, we just fought tooth and nail to bring this home and to make something that we're proud to share with with people and to come from a place of honesty and integrity and again tell a, a story in an action thriller genre which i grew up adoring that is has a protagonist who's so complex and nuanced and 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 that is that's very exciting for me paul i'm i'm curious what do you think it is about anti-heroes that people love to watch on screen? They're honest. I mean, you know, we, we have been inundated with, with heroes that are outside of our grasp our whole lives, you know? Um, and I think an anti-hero is a, is a, is a, is a, is a relatable, it's a relatable figure. I mean, it's someone who, um, you know, who has real human failings and limitations. Um, you know, it's a, it's just, it's a more, that's a more honest, um, a more honest figure. And I think we very much embraced the anti-hero here, you know, very much. Those are the real heroes in life. It's the, it's the guy that ends up climbing the building to save a, a child who's not a fireman, who's not someone who's has a technique and is trained and he sees somebody and he runs and, and doesn't even realize he did it. And then he does it. And those are those are the heroes, you know, these are all the people that run into to save others in spite of their own fear and obstacles that just, you know, propelled forward. It's beautiful. Before I run out of time with you guys, um, Adrian, if you don't mind, I just want to ask you an individual question because I am a big fan of Andrew Dominic. And I'm, I'm just curious if you could talk a little bit about working on Blonde, um, just because I'm, I'm curious about that project. Andrew's amazing. Um, you know, <laughs> blonde is Andrew's clean <laughs> wanting to make this movie for also well over a decade. And, um, it's a, it's a remarkable film. I mean, Anna, Anna is just magnificent in the movie. Uh, I, 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 I was awestruck, um, by her interpretation. And at times I felt like I was acting with Marilyn Monroe. I'm a big fan of Andrew's work and, um, you know, he, uh, he's a wonderful filmmaker and, and um, he, uh, I consider him a, a friend now and I, 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 uh, I, I'm waiting, uh, eagerly awaiting the, the, the release of that film. Oh, as am I. Yeah. Um, I really mean it. You guys obviously uh, are good together. So I hope that you are making another project in the not so distant future. Um, so you know, because, uh, you know, I'll watch it. Just throwing that out there. You guys have a great day. Thank you so you much. Too. Okay. Take care.